Hello and good morning. This is uh, Pete Riley, and I have purchased a John Deere 728 tractor. It is a 2011, and it has about 2,000 hours on it. I bought it not running, and one of the reasons it's not running is it had a bad fuel pump. So I've taken the fuel pump out of the tank and taken it apart here. I could tell that the pump was bad by testing the fuel pump at this connection, and uh, I measured thousands, many thousands of ohms between the two contacts here, and it should really just be a very few ohms for a, a normal motor, normal 12-volt type motor. So I, I could test it without taking this apart. When I did take it apart, the pump itself is a, a unit like this, and that mounts in this frame, connects to this hose, connects to this wire jumper, and goes to the bottom of the tank. It has a, a rubber mount that uh, fits over the pump like that, goes through this frame held there, and there's a, a filter that snaps onto the bottom of the pump like that. The pump sucks gasoline up through this hole and pumps it out the top here. The, there are no seals in this pump. The pump is completely filled with gasoline. It has a, a brush-type permanent magnet motor. And you might wonder, well, brush motors generally cause sparks, and why doesn't that cause an explosion? Uh, it just so happens that gasoline inside of a tank, the vapor part will have too high a concentration of gasoline to be explosive. Like in your automobile gas tank, the air above the gasoline is just too saturated with gasoline vapors to be explosive. So if there were a spark in your car's gas tank, uh, it would not explode. So that's the reason that you can have in-gas tank fuel pumps like this. Also, the float level device that uh, tells you how full your gas tank in has a little brush potentiometer, and that can conceivably cause sparks too, and that will not cause an explosion for the same reason. So this pump has failed, not, not this one, this is a replacement one. Uh, I bought this. doesn't have a manufacturer's name, but it does say Made in USA. And I'm going to install this. This tests about 4 ohms between the two contacts, and that indicates a, a good pump. I've uh, assembled the gas pump back into its frame. This is just a slip-in electrical connector. As it turns out, the replacement pump was just a little bit taller than the original pump, and I had to trim off this hose just a bit. Uh, with that, though, it went in okay. Uh, I put the, the rubber uh, vibration mount at the bottom, goes between the pump and the holder. Then I pressed on the, uh, the filter that goes at the bottom. This keeps the the jump from coming up out of the uh, gas tank into the pump and jamming things up. So I think we're ready to go here. This shows the return line from the fuel injection system. goes down and empties here. And then this is the feed line. comes from the fuel pump in here, out here. Just screw down by these screws. That looks like that's good and ready to go back in the tractor. I was curious as to what actually went wrong with the old pump. Why did it fail? And when I took the pump out of the, the housing and tested the resistance between the two contacts here, and it was mag ohms, way, way too high, no contact in essence. So I cut the unit apart on my lathe into different sections like this and when I did that it was pretty obvious what had gone wrong. 
Here's the, the brushes, and you can see that the commutator, which is right here, which really should be flat, is actually worn down a great deal. It's really cratered in. These uh, segments here that you can see are copper, and they've all turned black. But the real problem is simply the wear. And you can see the effect. And here's, here's the, the brushes that run against the contacts, the, the commutator. They're still springy, but clearly they've worn down. So this motor is completely, the rotor is completely housed in plastic. And remember, this is spinning in liquid gasoline. There are no seals to keep the motor dry. So that the, the bearings and the rotor and the commentator are all running in liquid gasoline because the gas gets sucked up from one end of the pump, flows through the pump, and then exits out here, which is that port right there. The pump runs with a permanent magnet motor, and these are the magnets. The magnets are not glued in place. You can just slide them right out, just like that. They're held in by a, a spring, and this section here separates them. So the spring on one side and this plastic separator holds the magnets in place. They're not glued, probably because it's awfully hard to find a glue that will stand up in a, a gasoline environment. Gasoline is really tough. And here's the original manufacturer. You can see it's a, uh, a Carter made in USA. And remember, this tractor only has 2,000 hours on it, which, to my mind, seems that this pump should have lasted longer. But it is clearly worn out, and there's nothing that could have been done with this. Here's how the, the pump actually pumps. The rotor goes through here, that's one of the bearings, and you can see this structure here, this, this curve cut in the, uh, in the housing. And then on this, there's a, a turbine like structure. You can see the very fine turbine blades. And that goes on this. And the motor turns this turbine section. And then the uh, section that draws up the fuel is this. This is where that filter goes. And this is at the very bottom of the gas tank. And it has a, another curved scroll section like this on the other side. And this goes together like that. So there's the stator. The fuel is sucked up around this curve. It goes into this turbine and goes through all these fine turbine-like blades. I think that's just simply a hard plastic. And then there's a, a similar structure on the other end, where there's a, a curve that goes around like that. And then there's the rotor, and those are just plain bearings. And they're in very good shape, and they're lubricated by gasoline. You can see there's really no wear on the bearing surface of the motor. And the motor, other than the commutator, seems to be in quite good shape. So it's sort of a, uh, a curiously built motor. Haven't seen one like that before. With such heavy wear on a commutator like this, you might think that uh, maybe there's some flaw in the windings. We can measure the resistance from um, each commutator pair and see that they're equal. Sometimes there can be shorts in the winding 
And if that happens, you generally can detect uh, the problem by just measuring the resistance uh, between each pair. So we'll, we'll do this. Uh, we get about 1 ohm or 0.9 ohms there. About the same there. And the same. And the same. And around back. So it seems like each commutator pair has equivalent resistance. Also, you can see that the the wear in each commutator is even. If there, say, is a shorted turn, generally you'll see wear or arcing on one gap between the commutators, but in this case, everything is quite even, so it's unlikely that there's any flaws in the winding, or maybe there's something wrong with the brushes. The, uh, the brushes look okay, I mean heavily worn, but they don't look like they have any flaw. The spring loading feels good. Uh, the mounting doesn't appear to bind the brushes. So, sort of hard to say why it failed after what I think is relatively few hours. In a car, I think this, you know, 2,000 hours is probably equivalent to, say, uh, 60,000 miles. So, a lot of miles, but you wouldn't expect your car fuel pump to, to wear out that fast. That's about all I can do for the analysis, the bearings on the shaft. Seem good. No wear there. There's a uh, thrust bearing where the, the shaft presses against that. That seems good. The bearing here. That seems good. So, that's what we have. Not sure why. So, but I put the new replacement fuel pump in and install the whole fixture in the gas tank and the tractor and everything works fine now. So that's about it. That's my uh, analysis of the fuel pump failure in my John Deere tractor. So I got a few other things to do before I get it all uh, up and ready for the winter time, but uh, at least I have the gasoline problem solved.